That's some pretty trumpet playing right there. I read this? I'm not sure what the resolution is. Or if it's even on my stream correctly. Looks like it, but it looks kind of small, so... I'll read it. My head pounded, ears still rain slightly. Some of the worst nightmares I'd had in years uh, left me feeling like I'd been punched in the jaw. But just like any other day, I dragged myself to the office. There was another notice on the door from Mayor Vanetti's office. Permits out of date. They didn't like me much and were trying to drown me in paperwork. Seems legit. It was a slow month, weeks since I had had any real case to work on, so I passed the time pacing the office, smoking and staring at the mirror in the corner, safely covered with an old bed sheet. Why? Wow, see what? Why is that safe? Oh, ghost. Okay, but I don't dare look at my own reflection. I'm too afraid of what I might see. Afraid someday I might have to face what I really am. The girl came in so quiet, I nearly choked on my cigarette. <laughs> what is he doing, eating it? Mister, please, you gotta help me, mister. Okay, let's, oh yes, good. Yeah, what can I help you with? Please, no one else will listen to me, says the girl. Go on. She eyed me with just a dash of suspicion as I tossed back a handful of pills and chased them with a swig of whiskey. I could tell this might take a while. <laughs> okay. Good detective. Her name was Lily. She told me she was his mistress, the man all over the newspapers, the infamous ba banker, Mr. Reginald Farnsworth. Reginald? Reginald? I don't know. Mr. Farnsworth was a drunk, philandering bastard, but this girl seemed genuinely concerned that he had recently gone missing. I was concerned about the fact that Mr. Farnsworth, Farnsworth's wife had just turned up dead in Central Park two nights ago. You don't understand. He couldn't. He just couldn't have done it. He hated his wife, but he couldn't have killed her. 
Everyone thinks it was him and no one believes me. He's gotta be in trouble, says Lily. I ain't saying I believe you. What, what makes you think he's in danger? Well, mister, um... Jack. You can just call me Jack. Jack, whoever did that to his wife must have been the one who took him. He would have never left without me. He promised me. Uh-huh. That's what they all say. I'm sure Mr. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Farnsworth promised this girl a lot of things. Please, the cops won't listen to me and they want to bring him in on charges. You gotta prove it wasn't him before they find him. Honestly, I doubt they are in too much of a hurry. Yep. Let's see. Ransworth had practically the entire police force in his deep pockets. Probably why they hadn't found much yet. they found him and brought him in, it would be due to public pressure. Sometimes a mob with pitchforks is more dangerous than one man with money. You got my curiosity, but you might not like what I find. It's my choice. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jack. Thank you. Please be careful. I don't think this was just any murderer or kidnapper. I think it I think it was a monster monster inside. Haha, <laughs> I see where this is going. Oh, a beast. Excuse me. Beast. The word struck me funny, like when you jar your elbow on a hard corner. This guy's supposed to have the gruff of a detective, apparently. Not a word many use these days, except in hushed whispers and bedtime stories for children. Oh, they were real enough, all right. They just got better at hiding controlling their unseemingly urge urges, but I hadn't seen any monsters in nearly 15 years back when I was still a cop myself. Probably the last time he looked in the mirror. Maybe they mean sociopath. That's definitely an interesting theory. That's what I'm saying. I just have a feeling about it. Something tells me you can get to the bottom of it. You're good at this sort of thing, says Lily. And how would you know, Lily? Do you stalk me, Lily? I don't even know who you. Sure, can't you see how busy I am with cases? That's good, too. I replied a little too harshly. Sarcasm wasn't my strong suit. I reassured her some more and sent her on her way. I didn't want to scare her, but I warned her before she left to keep her doors locked and call me if she saw anything suspicious. I didn't know if she was any, any, in any danger herself, but better safe than sorry.
that night, I made my way down to Central Park. It was a long shot, but maybe there was something there the cops had missed. Next chapter. <laughs> The scene was already picked clean by the cops days ago, but I've got a knack for finding the things others overlook. Oh, like the tree. A knack more of a symptom of a condition. Other less useful symptoms I keep in check. But, for the time being, my keen sense of smell would come in handy. Because, of course, you are a beast. <laughs> it was faint, but I could smell it before I even approached the police line. The scent was less of a thing and more of an emotion. Interesting. Seduction. Ooh, that's not an emotion. That's like pheromones or some shit. A strangely familiar smell. I expect the scent of trepidation or maybe even outright fear but Mrs. Farnsworth seemed to have been at the height of pleasure when she left this world. Brought new meaning to a crime of passion. Pushing the thought from my mind, it was time to get down to business. Time to investigate. Ooh, what is this? Oh, it's a burn. A burn mark on a nearby tree caught my eye. I ran my fingers along its length and felt a chill, felt a chill down my spine. This wasn't just any burn mark. This was the mark of an ancient magic. It's doubtful the cops would have picked up on it. Lily had been right. Something unnatural was at play here. But I was no stranger to the strange. Muddy footprints everywhere. Difficult to pick out anything from the prints the cops left behind in their haste. Let's see. But cops don't wear $2,000 pairs of Carcanos. It looked like Mr. Farnsworth was there that night and walked away on his own two feet. After looking around for a while longer, I realized the park had given up all it was hiding from me. So, I trudged back to my apartment, and my head hit my pillow like it owed me money. There's just some interesting symbolisms here, I should say. <sighs> the next morning, I was reeling from another bout of ghoulish nightmares, but I tried to hide my discomfort when I saw Lily was already sitting outside my office. She waited, wordlessly, as I unlocked the door and ripped down another notice from the mayor's office. I motioned for her to step inside, seemingly afraid of what I might ask. She finally worked up the courage to ask. Come on. Do 
So, what did you find? I got some gun news. Barnsworth might still be alive. I probably shouldn't have given her false hope like that. She seemed like she needed something to hold on to right then. She didn't need to know about the mark on the tree. How do you know that? Where is he? There were signs, blah, 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 I didn't read it. My tone was indifferent towards her as I turned and grabbed a bottle from my desk drawer. A dryness in my throat made it difficult to swallow my meds. <laughs> he takes meds the right way. Suppression meds. Suppresses condition. Anyways. But you don't know where he went? Do you think the news this morning is related? What news is that? Haven't you heard? Nope. Rough night followed by a rough morning. They found the police chief's wife dead down by the docks. They say it happened last night. Ooh. Let me guess. Chief Amato is missing too. My face might have betrayed a hint of satisfaction as she confirmed my suspicions, but it faded quickly. Amato was a shit cop and a shit chief. He was half the reason I left the force, but now his wife was dead and I had more questions than I did the day before. The gears in my head started to spin, which wasn't, hel which wasn't helped by the splitting pain at my temples. I told Lily I needed time to work and she left slightly de dejected, wanting more answers than I could provide. That night, after the cops had cleared out of the docks, I would slip down and see what I could uncover concerning Mrs. Amato's untimely demise. I wonder if the choices actually matter. The cold air smelled strongly of salt and oil and... Could it be? You sure? That smell again. Like someone had bottled pure arousal and used it as a perfume. It hit me like a long forgotten memory, but the sensual fume soon gave way to a rush of adrenaline. I knew exactly what the scent reminded me of, and that scared me more than not knowing. It's a siren, I bet. Anyways, I looked down at my hands, shaking. The nightmares, the headaches. No, I was better now. Reformed.
Oh. I had to focus. No jumping to conclusions. Follow the evidence. Red Phoenix cigarettes, the same shitty brand I smoke every day. Everyone's got their vice. Now here. There, just there, the smallest piece of purple fabric. Torn and caught in splinter of a board. The police report didn't say anything about Mrs. Amato wearing purple, and it was certainly of a quality that you wouldn't expect down here. Don't see too many high society types around flaunting royal purple threats. I pulled out my own pack of reds and lit up. I could already feel another headache coming on, but looking out over the waves seemed to help me forget. The cold helped me push down the uncomfortable thoughts that had been bubbling up to the top of my brain. I honestly don't remember the walk back to the office. Apparently, I spent the night in my easy chair. The air from the docks lingered on my clothes. It was still dark out and no. I checked the clock. How long had I been out? Had I really slept through the entire next day? Newspaper was sitting under the door. As I stood to fetch it, I nearly fell over. A whiff of nausea hit me like a ton of bricks. I steadied myself and regained my composure. Before I even picked up the paper, I already read the headline. Breaking, mare missing, wife found dead. Two cases is a coincidence. Three is a pattern. The cops would come asking questions soon. They knew I had a history of antagonizing all the victims. Uh-oh. It is inhibitor pills. Ah. I stumbled to my desk and slammed back three days' worth of inhibitor pills. I couldn't take any chances. I had to investigate the scene to be sure. I threw on my jacket and went down. I went to the door. Lily caught me off guard on the other side. Jack, where are you off to? I've been trying to reach you all day. I've just been busy. I'm off to Mrs. Vinetti's crime scene. Okay, but we need to talk when you get back. Stay safe, said Lily. Hmm. She gave me a soft kiss on the cheek as I rushed off. Part of me wanted to stay and tell her it would be okay, but it would be a lie. Oh, 
Oh, here we go. The alley was located just behind the high-rise apartments where Mayor Vanetti and his wife lived. I could tell the police were spooked now. The crime scene was even sloppier than the last. They hadn't even bothered to submit the trash into evidence. Why wouldn't they at least look through the dumpster? I'm sure, well, it seemed untouched. No one wants to do the dirty work. But if I know how to find the good stuff, well, if I know, I, I know how to find the good stuff. It really doesn't take long if you know what to look for. Lightweight bags usually mean somebody was dumping documents. If you're lucky, they didn't bother to shred them. Jackpot. Shell companies, shady stock trades, bribes. I knew Mayor Vanetti was crooked, but this was unbelievable. And there was more. Letters between Mayor Vanetti and Chief Amato talking about me, how they were trying to get me shut down. They didn't like me snooping around crime scenes all the time. Well, they weren't here to stop me snooping around this one. Oh wait. Vanity's car. If he's still alive, why wouldn't he have left in his car? Didn't make any sense. I honestly wasn't too motivated to find him, but the stakes were too high, and my bet was edging towards the unthinkable. As I searched around for anything that might ass assuage my fears, I caught the scent again. That scent. It overwhelmed my other senses with undiluting pleasure. It was intoxicating, a weapon used on the weak-willed. A weapon I knew all too well, though it had been many years since I had used it. So. To suck you by, huh? Was there another like me? Was I being framed? It was impossible, was it? I was taking my inhibitors. I was reformed. But the nightmares, the headaches, the memory lapses. I couldn't even trust myself. I started walking back out the alley when something shiny caught my eye. A watch. Not just any watch, though. My watch.
How long had my wrist been bare? Surely I just dropped it when I first came down the alley. I checked the time just before I left the office. Hadn't I? Or had I used the wall clock? I couldn't be sure. I couldn't be sure of anything. So I ran. I don't know why I ran back to the office. The cops would probably show up any minute to knock down the door and cart me away. They put it together before long. Maybe it would be best for everyone if I simply faced my own reflection. But Lily was still there waiting for me. Jack, what's wrong? It looks like you've seen a ghost. My own ghost, come back to haunt me from the past. You're not making any sense, Jack. Come sit down. You don't understand. You're not safe around me. I took a good last look at her as I prepared to shove her out the door. I noticed she was wearing the same thing she had when she first came to my office three days ago. A beautiful purple dress. Odd that I hadn't really noticed before, but it made her seem out of place. Out of time. And it was frayed around the edges, torn in places. My chair caught my fall as my knees failed me. It was you. You are the monster, Succubus. <laughs> oh, Jack, we are one and the same, you and I. We are both monsters. I'm simply more honest with myself. There's no such thing as reformation. Those pills you take only make you dull. Beasts like us should never suppress our true natures, as you have, Incubus. Those men were probably dead too, now I figured. She probably took them to her lair and harvested their seed. So, you've done all this just to wake me up? You could say that, though it seemed enough just to have you doubt yourself. You believed you are still capable of such horrors, which means deep down, you probably are. can't escape it. Now I need you to complete the deed. You took my watch, messed with my head. Oh, don't act like I didn't do you a favor. Those men hated you and wanted you gone, and now they are gone.
I mustered the strength to stand again, moving casually to the window by the corner. She was right about one thing. I was dull, weak compared to her. If I refused her and she attacked me, I was a dead man. I had to keep her talking. I've never met a succubus who seduces and kills women. Oh please, such a 14th century stereotype. I don't discriminate when it comes to the pleasures of the flesh. But I still do need an incubus like yourself to take the tainted seeds I've harvested from those awful men and plant it among the fertile masses for me. tired of draining my lovers just to survive. I'm ready to settle down and start a family. <laughs> that maniacal laughter. I positioned myself carefully, making sure she was looking my direction. Sorry, but I'm not your guy. With a quick flick of my wrist, I whipped the old bedsheet off the corner mirror. Lily is blinded by her own reflection and sucked into the mirror with a painful, monstrous scream, trapped. Shielding my own eyes, I pulled a revolver from my desk side drawer, aimed it at the mirror. And fired. didn't say though what happened to it, if the police were still gonna well he would have been framed though so and then the suspect is gone oh, I'm tired good story though Okay, I'll check out this one too, but not not read through it now. Interesting story, kind of and it ended without resolving itself, but interesting nonetheless. See, I'll stop the stream for now.